Hey there, Horse Center fans. Matt and I are back with another exciting edition of the show. Matt, we are talking about a Kentucky Derby top 10, only six weeks out. We have big races at the fairgrounds and a champion returning. Yeah, what a great return by Swiss Skydiver. And we've got Derby and Oaks races in New Orleans. Watch it all right now here on Horse Center fans. And if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation, do so now. Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast, that's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I'm really good, Brian. I'm excited to do our second New Look Horse Center show. Absolutely. Let's jump right in, Matt. And before we get into all the derby doings, if you don't mind, I would like to talk about my favorite horse in training, Matt. None other than Swiss Skydiver, the daughter of Daredevil, returned in style. Grade one, adding another grade one win to her growing resume, Matt. She went out to California for the Beholder Mile. Yep, and she answered one of those important questions with Phillies when they come back in a new year. Are they going to still be interested in running and competing? And Swiss Skydiver was certainly uh, ready to do that. And in a, in a great way, didn't stay at her home base, jumped on a plane, went across the country, and won in California. Oh, Matt, is it, is it any doubt that this Philly will travel anymore? I mean, she ran seven different states last year, nine different tracks. Uh, they, they even thought about sending her to Royal Ascot, but the pandemic kind of poo-pooed that not. But she, yeah, she, she left Miami, her, her winter base down there to go to California. I thought she was sublime in this one mile grade one out at Santa Anita. It was the second trip, second very successful trip to Santa Anita. Obviously she likes it out West. Breeders Cup will not be at Santa Anita, but it'll be out West at Del Mar this year, Matt. But uh, she's just all racehorse. You see it time and time again. She's won six of her last nine. She ran big in a couple others. She had that unfortunate break, and she came back a little worse from where than in her only off-the-board performance recently in the Breeders' Cup this half. Even in this race, you can see she's all racehorse. She just puts herself in the spot. She waited on the rail. She took the opening when she wanted it, and uh, it was all Swiss skydiver, and it was great to see. And once again, we've got a great uh, group in the older female division. And hey, we're looking forward to when Swiss Skydiver and Monomoy Girl meet. Yeah, she, she shares the devil. Also came back a winner over that tough mare Latruska uh, last week at Oakland Park. So she's on the list. But yeah, Monomoy Girl and, uh, and Swiss Skydiver, we can't wait for a few meetings. And that, the first one could happen as soon that's the middle of April because they both have the apple blossom as a real possibility on their schedule. So a lot to look forward to there as there is, of course, six weeks out from the Kentucky Derby, Matt. Let's jump into our top 10. And I think we might surprise people a little bit with who is number one on our new list, Matt. It's concert tour. Yeah. And we might surprise the regular horse center fans in that, uh, when they see our top two but yeah for me it was a tough you know it was a tough call uh between the top two between concert tour and life is good because in many ways uh, uh their records are similar three for three uh, uh big uh big debuts come back and win a stakes race and and they're for both of them their most recent uh race was stellar concert tour uh went out to arkansas in the in the rebel and uh changed things up a little bit because i don't know if i expected her to come flying him come flying out of the gate like he did and took control of the race right away and uh as it turned out brian the race was over fairly early on yeah, you know, I've seen Bob Baffert horses come from California to Oakland Park and do that before, Matt, where they are really rushed out of the gate and it, it becomes a necessity for them to get to the early lead. Clearly, that was the case as he beat the very fast Caddo River, who had the rail in the uh, starting gate to that rail position heading into the first turn. And for, from there, it was Concert Tour, who was the better horse. Perhaps Caddo River, who I think is a very talented horse, we have distance questions with him, I think a little bit, but perhaps Cattle River might be one of those horses who really 
needs to get on the lead to do his best running. But regardless, Concert Tour was very uh, impressive. As both horses relaxed down the backstretch and Concert Tour, you could see as they were entering the far turn, that was just a horse with a lot more horse in the tank for that stretch run in the Rebel. And, and interestingly, I, I will say this, this is a consensus top 10. Matt has Life is Good, one, Concert Tour, two on his list. I had Concert Tour, one, Life is Good, three on my list. And the, and the separator for me, Matt, is Concert Tour, I think might be a mile and a quarter horse, more so than Life is Good. Life is Good seems like a horse who really wants to sprint out to the, to the, to the lead. Concert Tour, I don't think he needs to do that because he has passed horses despite what we saw uh, in this revel. So for me, with the breeding and, and just the way they relax a little bit early in the race, I think Concert Tour is a better bet to get a mile and a quarter. But of course, number two on our list, Matt, life is good, has been nothing but good in history races. Yeah, Brian. And, and you know, just a little more about, uh, about mm -hmm. Concert Tour. Uh, one of the things that impressed me the most wasn't, you know, wasn't the winning margin and the fact that he really, that he beat a good field of horses. I like the way he has done it in, uh, in his races so far. He's very professional and poised out on the racetrack, which you can't say about life is good at this point. Life is good is certainly a horse that is more high strung, uh, then his stable mate and, and in his last two races has been a little wacky coming down the stretch. But for me, uh, Brian, uh, the bottom line is that life is good is really fast. I think he's way faster than, uh, than concert tour. And, you know, I, I've felt this way before about Baffert horses. I felt this way about authentic. He, he's a little bit uh, 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 unpolished and such, but, uh, it was a tough call between between the, those two Baffert horses. Yeah, despite uh, you know I had him at number three, but despite that, I, I can't uh, I can't discredit you for having him number one or anybody else because just on sheer talent, I recognize life is good. Very well, could be the most talented three year old in this crop. I saw some negatives, whether it be uh, not finishing up as well as he should in the Sham or really bearing out a lot in San Felipe, but his speed and talent are pretty uh, uh, hard to question. Number three in our list, Matt, is, is, is an undefeated champion who's done nothing wrong. And in fact, he's looked very good. I thought he looked very good in returning in a wet edition of the Rebel or, or of the Southwest Stakes recently at Oakland Park. It looks like essential quality. Again, I'll say it again, the undefeated champion is headed to the Bluegrass next. Yeah, here we are, Brian, uh, with a horse that is unbeaten four for four, uh, in uh, the third position in our top 10. And I, and I guess, you know, that is uh, the case because we've got a top 10 here, uh, uh, the top three in our list that combined are 10 for 10. Um, essential quality hasn't done anything wrong. Uh, Son of Tappet uh, is going to get better. Uh, it's got good speed figures in his initial races. Um, these three have never met each other, and I, and I don't think they're going to meet each other until the Kentucky Derby if they all get there. But hey, that's going to make just those three going to make a heck of a field. Yeah, and in recent years, Matt, my thinking for the Kentucky Derby had to change a little bit. Not only the domination of Bob Baffert, but also the, 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 the horses that are out there on the lead really in the last decade have, have been very tough to beat in the Kentucky Derby. That that is a change from what we saw in the decades before uh, the, the, the past decade. So uh, I guess you're seeing a little bit of our thinking here with both speed and with, of course, Bob Baffert's success at the Kentucky Derby. It's hard to deny, but essential quality certainly looks like a strong Derby candidate. And maybe uh, five years ago, 10 years ago, he would have been number one on my list for everything that he brings to the table, which is a lot. And number four on the list, Matt, is another horse I think I would have liked more before this recent trend, because he's a horse who really looks like he wants 10 furlongs. He's a horse who really can pick up horses in the stretch. I'm talking about greatest honor. Yes, Brian, I completely agree with you. Uh, uh, Shug McGahey, remembering one uh, uh, derby back in 2013 with Orb, with one, one of those late runners uh, uh, to win the derby in the last 10 years or so. Um, and greatest honor has looked terrific 
in his two wins at Gulfstream Park, first in the Holy Bowl, second uh, in the Fountain of Youth. And, and he seems to be the kind of horse that, you know, uh, uh, he, not, not a speed horse like, like these Baffert runners, but uh, sits in a good position and, and then turns on a really impressive uh, 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 kick down the stretch timed really perfectly to get up for the win and and i think that's part of the reason that his speed figures in the last two uh, races have not been up on the level of certainly the two baffert horses and and even for that matter essential quality uh, i can't count the uh, uh, greatest honor out of this as greatest honor is heading next to the florida derby yeah, Greatest Honor's been terrific, and I'll, I'll go as far as to say he's been terrific in all three races. He's won at Gulfstream, breaking his maiden uh, earlier this year at Gulfstream. So he's won three in a row at Gulfstream, which reminds me a lot of Orb, among other things, the trainer and the late running factor. But he's just taken off at Gulfstream Park, much like Orb did. I think there are some questions there as far as who is he beaten, and, and maybe with the speed figures. I think the top three have been tested by better horses so far in their careers at least to some degree, than Greatest Honor probably has. So we need to see him uh, again move forward. I think there will be some new shooters in the Florida Derby, which will make that uh, a little bit tougher for him. But I have every uh, confidence that Greatest Honor can keep doing what he's been doing. He's looked so good in these last three races. He reminds me of a, a, a orb uh, coming up to the Kentucky Derby. He reminds me a little bit of Unbridled from a long time ago coming up to the Kentucky Derby. Uh, Orb, when he won the Kentucky Derby, Matt, that was a really, really strong pace, and that helped Orb do what he did. Greatest honor could get this year. There, there, there does look to be some speed setting up for this year's Derby. We'll see. Another horse who might be coming from off the pace in the Kentucky Derby, Matt, is the Chad Brown uh, entry here into our top 10. That's risk-taking. The son of Medaglia Doro uh, has taken off in his last couple starts with the addition of blinkers. Yes, certainly so. And, and you know, what? Uh, Maybe we've got a little bit of a gap here from the top four to the rest down underneath. But uh, but when I say gap, that, that I, I mean that a little less uh, a little less proven. Certainly, risk taking. Got two big wins at Aqueduct most recently in the Withers, um, and we'll expect uh, him to come back in the Wood Memorial in a couple of weeks. In what's shaping up to be a little bit of a better quality race at Aqueduct. Yeah, I agree. Uh, there's some good horses uh, looking at the wood this year, so it might be a stronger wood than of recent years, Matt. And, and good point. Uh, my top four are clearly my top four right now. Everybody else, I think, is more of a question mark. We'll find out more in races like the Wood Memorial and the uh, uh, Louisiana Derby on Saturday. Uh, number six is going to be the favorite for the Louisiana Derby. That's Mandaloon, the son of uh, uh, Into Mischief, Matt, will uh, I definitely expect to be favorite. We're going to talk about him a little bit more as we get into the Louisiana Derby, but he's number six on our list. Number seven on our list is Hot Rod Charlie, also going in the Louisiana Derby. So let's jump down to number eight, Medina Spirit. Matt, Medina Spirit has done a lot in a short amount of time, but on the other hand, it doesn't look like he's as good as life is good. Um, yeah, it, it, that is the case. And maybe we can throw in uh, a concert tour in there, but, uh, Hey, uh, uh, has done, has done really good things this year. That win, uh, in the Robert B. Lewis, uh, was very impressive. It's gotten good speed figures in, uh, in, in all th three of his last races, um, and, uh, has, been you know versatile in terms of being able to stalk and has shown a lot of courage so another Bob Baffert one yeah and, and of course the reason I compare him to life is good is because life is good has beaten him in the last two starts however I think the Kentucky Derby could be different uh, Medina Spirit is a horse who I think does want a distance he's proven his gameness his toughness in a few of those races and uh, yeah if life is good has to run hard with with uh, competition early then I think Medina Spirit is a viable horse to turn the tables on his stable mate that's beaten him the last two times. I think Medina Spirit is one of the more battle-tested horses after the top four. So I, I, I'm very confident of, of still having him in the top 10, despite being drubbed last time by life is good. Number nine, Matt, is another Louisiana Derby horse, our third Louisiana Derby horse, the son of Taffet is prop, uh, proxy out of the uh, 
Michael Stidham Barnes. So we'll talk about more, more about him in a minute. Number 10 is a new shooter to our list, Matt. And there's a few interesting horses that still have not run in stakes races. Certainly prevalence is one of them. The son of Medagliadoro is two for two. Yeah, uh, uh, trained by Brendan Walsh, a Godolphin horse as they, as they continue to look for their first Kentucky Derby win, a very, very impressive maiden special weight win. He got a little bit, uh, a little bit sick after that. Missed a little bit of time, but they got him right back in training, and he returned in an allowance race with a very impressive victory uh, uh, at Gulfstream Park. Who knows how good this one's going to be? They've got to get some uh, big points in his next start, and they're shopping around. They're looking at a few different possibilities uh, in those 100-point races to get into the Derby. Yeah, that even that becomes even more important for a horse like Prevalence, who yet has no points. So they've got to find not only a good spot for the horse, but also a good spot maybe where there's less competition to get the points. So it'll be interesting to see where Prevalence goes. I thought his maiden was even more impressive with his allowance. I have no problems with his allowance, but maybe he wasn't 100% geared up after that little bit of sickness. And uh, I think he would need to improve off that allowance to beat the, some of the top horses on this list but I love the way he moves. He's got a very fluid style of racing as many Medagliadoros do. I think prevalence could get better and I think he could be a Derby prep winner in his next start. So folks, that's our top 10, Matt. That was, uh, that was fun. We agree on the top four, whether the order is exactly the same. We both have our top four. Looks like it's uh, six weeks out. Looks like it's gonna be a pretty good Kentucky Derby sir. That's for sure. And why don't we uh, head down to Louisiana? Oh, I wish we were really heading down Louisiana, not because I love that city. New Orleans has great food, among other things to see down there. The Louisiana Derby would be a fun day. Lots of good races on Louisiana Derby Day. But of course, we're going to focus on the mile of 316th grade two still. But it's a million dollars, Matt. And you already heard that we have a bunch of horses in our top 10 in this race, starting with Mandaloon, the son of Into Mischief, trained by Brad Cox looked good in rebounding last time not in the risen star yeah he certainly did brad cox uh from judmont already got a slew of points already has his way into the kentucky derby field and i did i agree with you brian i did like the way he rebounded from that third place uh finish in the lecomte when he won the risen star likely to be uh, uh, a pretty solid favor in this race, but uh, um, it's got a lot of competition. This is a nice field. It is a nice field. I will say this about Mandaloon. He was equipped with blinkers for the first time last time. Uh, Jeru's been on him every step of the way, but he looked even more focused last time. It was also his second try at two turns and in stakes competition. So he moved forward a little bit after getting beat in the Lecomte as the favorite. People still made him the favorite in the, in the Risen Star. And he looked like a more focused horse and a horse who still has more room for improvement. He's, I'm not ready to put him up there with the top four that we just saw on our Kentucky Derby list, but he looks like a real Kentucky Derby candidate. He's the horse to beat in here, but like Matt said, a lot of good options. Let's start with uh, one of the only two horses that are new to the field, because six of his eight, Matt, ran in the Risen Star last time. So five horses were beaten by Mandaloon last time. Hot Rod Charlie's not one of them. He was beaten last time, but he ran a very good race, went third, beaten only a neck in the uh, Robert P. Lewis behind Medina Spirit. Yes, and, and we, we need to note that that was his debut for 2021 after running second uh, in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile for trainer Doug O'Neill, who will not be at the race, who is serving a suspension, but his, uh, his veteran assistant, Leandro Mara, was quite capable of, uh, of taking care of uh, this horse that, that I like a lot. He was third in that blanket finish um, in the Robert B. Lewis. And then things did not necessarily go his way in that, uh, in that debut for the year. He stumbled a little bit out of the gate. He got bumped around a little bit in there, but, and, and then had to race in tight quarters between horses. Um, I like him moving ahead with that race under his belt. Yeah, there's a lot to like about Hot Rod Charlie. Uh, the only other time he shipped out of Southern California, of course, he ran a big race to be second last year at long odds in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile behind Essential Quality. 
I wonder if he wants a mile and a quarter. So this will be a good test. I like his uh, male side, Oxbow out of Awesome again to get the distance, but the female side, there might be some less distance there. So it'll be interesting to see. It's one of the things I'm uncertain about in this trip because he's never been further, further than a mile 16th. The other horses in the race, most of the other horses in the race have been a mile eight. Um, he looks like a grinder too. He, he did get, he did, was able to get good position on the backstretch in the uh, Robert B. Lewis. But then, like you said, he fought on very gamely in between two horses uh, last time. So uh, a nice horse, a nice shipper. He's got more work to do, I think, than the rest because he's never been this far and he's coming to fairgrounds for the first time, but certainly a dangerous horse. As is the third horse I want to talk about, Matt, that's Proxy. Proxy's already run four times at the fairgrounds. He's won two and he's been second in the last two. Of course, this, the, the last two were in the Lecompte and the Risen Star, and he finished well in both of those. Now he gets blinkers on, Johnny V's on him for the second time. I love that breeding, Matt. Tap it, panty raid. I think he's a mile and a quarter horse. This is a mile three sixteenths. Talk me off of Proxy, if you will. Um, I, I'm not going to talk you off Proxy. I like Proxy in here also. Uh, another Godolphin, uh, as we mentioned, another chance for them to get their first Derby win if things if things go well. And maybe Blinkers on is all that he needs to uh, get him out of second place and into the winner's circle. Yeah, it, it might be the difference in picking up horses a little bit earlier in the lane as, as the last two races, it seemed he kind of kicked it in late to be second. So Proxy, probably the third choice. Uh, yeah, I, I like him at those odds, at least. I, I, I do recognize Mandaloon as the horse to beat, but watch out for Proxy. Another horse who should get bad, Matt, is Midnight Bourbon. Uh, lots of stakes experience. He won the Lecompte. He ran a good third last time in the Risen Star. I, I just don't, I, I tried to work out a scenario where he's going to turn the tables this time, and I really couldn't do it. Yeah, Brian, I, I agree with that. Um, you know, uh, maybe he's being forgotten a little bit, or maybe it's just what we mentioned before, that this is a, that this is a pretty tough field. Um, he did win the Lecomte, and, and uh, you know, it, it, it's Steve Asmussen, but I felt the same way. Uh, when I was handicapping this, he just was a little bit below the top three that we've mentioned. Yeah, a little bit below. And another one that I worry a mile three sixteenths might be a little farther than he wants. There is other speed in the race. So I'm off of Midnight Bourbon again in here. Uh, perhaps the most interesting of the rest, Matt, is Run Classic, a son of Run Happy, who's only run twice, but they were very good efforts. Uh, a good second sprinting, and then he stretched out nicely to break his maiden last time on Risen Star Day. Yeah, and and one thing that we've learned, uh, even with all the commercials and hyping of Run Happy uh, when his first crop were two-year-olds, that these horses need time, and now that they've turned uh, three, uh, they're getting better and better. Yeah, and Brett Calhoun has upset the Louisiana Derby recently with By My Standards. This horse is a little less experienced than By My Standards was, but By My Standards was also coming out of a nice win against Cheaper before he upset the Louisiana Derby. There's three big long shots in here in my mind, Matt. Obesis, uh, a son of Orb, Right and Just, a son of Awesome Again, and uh, Starring In My Dreams, a son of Super Saver. Uh, they should be long shots, but I could see all three moving forward to the point where they get into the picture somehow, whether it be rallying for Obesis, showing a much more lucky trip for Star in My Dreams, or just being a little bit tougher on the lead in Right and Just. Yeah, uh, and uh, you know, coming some of them coming from good barns. You got a Dallas Stewart uh, in there uh, in Star in My Dreams. Absolutely, and and he had no luck last time. Matt, I'm going to be using Proxy and Mandaloon. I think those are the two most likely in here. I'm going to throw in some others with them in trifectas, but I really think Proxy and Mandaloon are good bets. One of them wins and the other one's in the trifecta. That's, that's how I'm going to bet this race. Yeah, I'm going to give uh, the California shipper Hot Rod Charlie one more chance um, as my top pick, um, and I'm certainly going to use him with Proxy and Mandaloon. Yeah, Hot Rod Charlie certainly is a danger. True. Okay, Matt, one more race we want to talk about on that same card. It's the Fairground Oaks. 
I think this is the best Kentucky Oaks prep that, that will be run so far. Uh, it's run Saturday, the race before the Louisiana Derby, a little shorter than the Louisiana Derby, also a grade two. It's a rematch. It's a rubber match, if you will, Matt, because Clarier and Travel Column have knocked heads in their last two races. Yes, Brian, and that uh, and that happened in the Rachel Alexandra at Fairgrounds. Um, and I, Brian, I, I don't know. Uh, I certainly can't find a way to uh, uh, separate those two. I really can't find a way to 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 favor one over the other because um, you know, uh, like you said, it's the rubber match. And last time uh, in the Rachel Alexandra, it was the two of them uh, down the stretch. Uh, Clarier uh, did prevail that in that instance, uh, daughter of Curlin um, out of the wonderful uh, uh, Mayor Cavorting uh, with Steve Asmus in training. Um, but, you know, uh, uh, travel column uh, was right there. Uh, so it's really, for me, uh, it's really those two. I, I, I don't, I, I'm curious to see if any other horse is going to have a chance to beat either Clarier or Travel Calm. Yeah, well, they'll get another test in here, Matt. There are some new horses in here, but yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I think, you know, these two were the, the top two on our Kentucky Oaks rankings last week. So obviously we like them both. Uh, Travel Calm was better late last year as a two-year-old than the Goldenrod. That was Clarier's second race, Travel Column's third race. Uh, in both of their debuts, uh, uh, seasonal debuts this year, they ran a terrific race, as you mentioned, in the Rachel Alexandra. I thought Clarier was super professional, kind of inside and between horses a little bit, kind of waiting to see which way she would go on Travel Column, who was a little bit closer to the pace that time. And it looked like she might run right by, but Travel Column had a lot left, and they, and they dinged on down the stretch. So a great race. Uh, I kind of like Clarier just a little bit better off of that race because uh, I think she was better in that race at the fairgrounds and the recent race. But Travel Column, both of them have reason to only get better. Uh, they're still both lightly raced and Travel Column, uh, you know, ran, ran an awfully good race in her first race back. So tough to separate as you two. As you mentioned, I think it's interesting that on my morning line, I have Clarier as a slight favorite in here. I saw the fairgrounds morning line had travel column a slight favorite. So I found that interesting, but they're certainly the top two. Matt, I think the horse that is most interesting to, interesting to me of the rest is Zagel. Uh, Todd Pletcher trained daughter street sense. She's two for two, but she's only sprinted. Yeah, two for two, only sprinted. Um, it, uh, a nice maiden win and then came back and won the forward gal. Um, at Gulfstream Park, and I think particularly noteworthy from that race is that uh, she beat Hol Bodemeister, who of course came back from that defeat and won and won the Devona Dale at Gulfstream, and, and that absolutely flattered Zagel. Um, speed figures were not very impressive in those two sprints, um, so I think. This uh, daughter of Street Sense is going to have to make a step forward, and, and, and those and that top two are pretty tough. Yeah, but on the other hand, Matt, I, I'm not buying the, the the speed figure out of the uh, forward gal. I mean, whole as we're watching the race, you know, she was professional. She did what she needed to do, and she won clear. Uh, you can see whole Bodemeister folks on the rail. She had a little bit of traffic there, and you can kind of see her. Uh, running a good race in that Ford Gallon. She came back with a huge race in the Devona Dale. So I think that's more important to me, both visually watching this race, seeing good horses, and then seeing what Hall Bodemeister came back to do in the Devona Dale. So I think Zagel does have a lot of talent, despite the, the low speed rating. And I think she is the, the one that could step up and beat the rest. There's a couple other interesting ones, though, Matt. Lil Tootsie was actually the third to, uh, third choice on the morning line from Fairgrounds. She's a daughter of Tapature for trainer Tom Amos, and she's starting to streak in New Orleans. Yep, got a nice maiden special weight victory followed by an allowance, and Tom Amos is always dangerous in big races, especially down in New Orleans. Yeah, he's a New Orleans guy, and, and I like the, the maiden sprint. And then I like the fact that she was able to rally in the slop, whole different type of horse she's going to be running against on Saturday. 
Uh, I don't think she beats the best in here, but she might be a good one. And she obviously has experience over the track. Obligatory might be a good one too, Matt. The daughter of Curlin, uh, trained by Bill Mott, uh, really stepped up in her second race to win a Gulfstream Park maiden pretty well. Yeah, and that's one of the, the the new faces, one of the outsiders, if you want to call her that, that I like in this race. Uh, um, another daughter of Curlin. This one's from Bill Mott, a Judd Mott uh, bred horse. So you know that there's quality there. Uh, um, was an impressive maiden special weight winner at, at low odds, which is unusual for a Bill Mott first timer i think there's been a lot of talk about obligatory and, and uh she could make a really nice step forward again this is a formidable field but um you know i like her as the possible fourth choice yeah and i think she could be the fifth choice in here matt so you'll get some odds on obligatory and i i, I too think she's got some real potential very tough spot coming out of a maiden win, but uh, she looks like a nice Philly, Philly developing for Bill Mott. I want to throw in one long shot. Her name is Il, Il Malacho uh, from uh, uh, a daughter of Super Speedy who, who ran in Canada uh, all last year. She's from the barn of Kenny McPeak, and it was about this time when Swiss Skydiver kind of turned the corner last year. I wonder if this Philly can turn the corner a little bit. She ran third in the Sun Coast at Tampa Bay. Uh, she gets a different track here at the fairgrounds. She'll be a big long shot. I don't expect her to win, but I want to see if she can move forward as well for trainer Kenny McPeak. Hey, uh, Kenny McPeak can be dangerous uh, uh, with some of these le lesser known horses in big races. Brian, who's going to be your top pick uh, in the fairground Oaks? I have Clary Air by a nose over travel column. Chalky, I know, but those, those two I like. Yeah, Brian, I'm not going to disagree with you. Maybe it's, you know, uh, 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 my sentimental attachment to uh, um, Stone Street horses, but I'm going with uh, Clarier also over Travel Column, but I like Obligatory also. Yeah, and I, I'm a fan of Frosted, as, as all of you know, so I'll be rooting for Travel Column, but my head says Clarier might be just the horse for this race. Matt, that's uh, that's the fairground Oaks. We talked about the Louisiana Derby. Great day. A bunch of other graded stakes on turf and dirt at fairgrounds on Saturday. So don't miss that, folks. Hope you enjoyed our top 10 and our look back at Swiss Skydivers return. Hey, Matt, can I get a parting shot from you, my friend? Absolutely, Brian. Uh, horse Center fans, I hope you're enjoying the, the new look, the new graphics from our new producer, Tony Badabing. Tony Badabing. Give it up for Tony Badabing. I, I don't even know, Matt, if that's his legal name, by the way, Tony Badabing. <laughs> it might be. I also want to thank uh, Candace Curtis for getting us those HRN uh, race graphics every week. We appreciate it. And most of all, folks, we appreciate you watching every week. Matt and I love to do the show. So thank you for joining us. Thank you to our sponsor, Derby Wars. They're the best contest site out there. Folks, we'll be back next week with a whole lot more right here on Horse Center.